A battle that started in the spiritual world came down to the material after the free will of both angels and men chose to oppose their creator. And that battle is still raging today. This spiritual war is manifested in every major institution, from education, to news, to entertainment, to politics, to courts. And each institution is heavily influenced by the church, for, as goes the church, so goes the world. These institutions, by their natures, play a huge role in any society, and each has a specific purpose. Education is meant to teach, news to inform, entertainment to entertain, politics to order, and courts to justice. In philosophy, teleology, or finality, explains phenomena in terms of ends, purposes, goals. In theology, theology explores the purpose and design of created things based on reason and revelation. Entertainment, politics, courts, and so forth exist to help us realize our final end. What is that end? In his work on the Trinity, St. Augustine says all agree in desiring the last end, happiness. Certainly America's founders agreed in the Declaration of Independence, referring to the pursuit of happiness as a God-given, inalienable right. That's natural teleology. It can be known by reason alone. Faith teaches that God is the last end of rational creatures, human and angelic beings. Thus, Jesus calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, our origin and our final end. God alone offers eternal happiness, which is nothing other than uninterrupted face-to-face -face union with him. In the arena of education, which in Latin is educare, meaning to train or mold, specifically in America, false teaching has always been a part of the institution. John Dewey, known as the father of American education, signed the first humanist manifesto, which denies the biblical account of creation, stating that the universe was not created. On education, the church teaches that parents are to see to the Christian education of their children, and in doing so, they share in the office of sanctifying. Today, proper education, meaning teaching the truth, is under full-fledged attack as some of the most powerful within the institution of education have called for a ban on homeschooling or private education. In an encyclical on Christian education, Pius XI highlights the absurdity of claiming children belong to the state, as they belong first and foremost to their parents. Therefore, parents have a natural right to educate their children. That right to educate their children, the Pope continues, is not for the parents' own advantage, but so the children are raised with a holy and filial fear of God, the beginning of wisdom. The children learn this foundation on which respect for all authority rests, and without which, Pius XI elucidates, quote, order, tranquility, and prosperity, whether in the family or in society, will be impossible, end quote. Education is ultimately about the intellect, about knowing, and as rational creatures, it is in knowing God that we love him and navigate through this veil of tears to eternal bliss with him in the kingdom of heaven. In the arena of media, which is the plural of the Latin word medium, meaning middle ground or intermediate, in America, specifically news, and particularly with regard to the more modern forms of cable and internet, misinformation has always been integral in this institution. Ted Turner, the founder of the first 24-hour cable news channel and mega-donor to the abortion industry, has called pro-lifers idiots and bozos. Today, millions watch and listen to this misinformation every single day. Jesus Christ, if you believe in, if, you, if that's who you believe in, Jesus Christ, admittedly was not perfect when he was here on this earth. If you believe in one another, and if you do the right thing for yourself and your community, things will get better in this country. You don't need help from above, it's within us. On the internet, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are a few of the most common social media platforms in the world, and today, Many people get their so-called news from these sources. Facebook, which owns Instagram, was founded by Mark Zuckerberg, and Twitter was founded by Jack Dorsey. The three platforms account for well over four billion users worldwide. 
Both founders ban free speech on each of their platforms, and in particular, speech that promotes the truth. In recent days, my office was contacted by a Facebook whistleblower, a former employee of the company, with direct knowledge of the company's content moderation practices, and I want to start by talking about an internal platform called Tasks. Here over my shoulder is an example, it's a screenshot of the Task platform in use. You'll notice if the cameras zoom in, several references to election integrity throughout on these lists of tasks. Again, this is shared across Facebook sites, uh, company locations, by working groups. What particularly intrigued me is that the platform reflects censorship input from Google and Twitter as well. The entertainment industry, another institution that reaches virtually every home in America, seems to have completely embraced evil. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, had a heavy influence on the already morally deprived entertainment industry. At 6114 California Street in San Francisco is where LaVey's headquarters was for his Church of Satan. He used the house from 1966 until his death in 1997. LaVey associated with many Hollywood stars, including Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Manson, Sammy Davis Jr., and many more. Sammy told me he worshipped the devil. Sammy was like, you know, Satan is as powerful as God. And I was like, what? There used to be rigorous standards on what Hollywood produced, and the Catholic Church had a big say in it as well. The National Legion of Decency, also known as the Catholic Legion of Decency, was founded in 1933 by Archbishop John T. McNicholas of Cincinnati to identify and object to immoral content in films. Hollywood's production code, which was the industry guidelines for self-censorship of content, gave the Legion of Decency the stamp of approval, which then meant films had to be submitted to the Catholic Legion for review before public distribution. The Catholic Legion of Decency had a huge impact on the entertainment industry because if certain films were condemned, this meant the tens of millions of Catholics at the time would be forbidden from viewing the films under pain of mortal sin. Catholics were asked to sign the Pledge of the Legion of Decency, this one from 1934, which states, I condemn absolutely those salacious motion pictures which, with other degrading agencies, are corrupting public morals and promoting a sex mania in our land. Nowadays, there is no Legion of Decency, and it follows that Hollywood promotes every single intrinsic evil imaginable. Yeah, so back in the summer I addressed the issue uh, with about, because an exorcist brought it up, is the United States diabolically oppressed, specifically oppression. And I wrote a four-part article on my website because there's so much that answers in the affirmative, unfortunately, very much in the affirmative, from pornography to divorce to adultery to abortion, um, Satanism, the occult. I mean, one of the, one of the statistics in my book says that there are currently, I think about two or three years ago, more registered Wiccans than there are Presbyterians, about 1.7 million. So the, we're in an, a vacuum, a religious vacuum, but it has to be filled because we're spiritual creatures. So we desire to worship and pivot our lives around something. So in the absence of the faith, of the true faith, a lot of people do um, gravitate towards Satanism and the occult. Of course, one of the gateways to that is an abundance of uh, doorways, uh, doorways of grave sins, the ones I mentioned, you know, abortion, pornography, um, at the top there. Um, Exorcists have learned that Satanists have taught pornographers how to curse the master copy of the pornography video so that anyone who watches any copies will be subject to the same curse. And with the statistics on pornography, you can just imagine how many people in the country are subjected to that same curse. And that's just pornography. We also have abortion, which is very clearly a satanic practice. You talk to Satanists, you talk to exorcists, you get you know, this is real, and you get some of the behind-the-scenes stories, especially involving Hollywood and government officials, the power of abortion. Thank you so much, um, first of all, to my Fosse Verdon family and to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. When you put this in someone's hands, you're acknowledging the choices that they make as an actor, moment by moment, scene by scene, day by day, but you're also acknowledging the choices they make as a person. And I wouldn't have been able to do this without employing a woman's right to choose. In the realm of politics, legislatures not only allow evil to persist in a nation, 
but have the ability to legislate and codify it. And with the courts as a branch of politics, this institution also possesses that ability. The failure of these two institutions with the respective purposes of order and justice has been proven by the increase of disorder and injustice. Looking only over the past roughly 50 years, contraception was legalized, then no-fault divorce, then abortion, now gay so-called marriage is legal, along with transgenderism. The Catechism teaches that the devil has a certain domination over man, and our ignorance due to original sin gives rise to serious errors in the areas of education, politics, social action, and morals. St. John Bosco tells us, do you want to outwit the devil? Never let him catch you idle. Work, study, pray, and you will surely overcome your spiritual enemy. The impetus behind studying and writing a book for spiritual warfare was I wanted to be holier than I was. So the key, and especially nowadays in this oppressed, highly likely oppressed country, if not oppressed world, the key to increasing in holiness is, I believe, and a lot of people believe, spiritual warfare. So we really have to know how the demons work, how God works against them, how we have need to have no fear against them. And the true power, as exorcists see it, of the sacraments and sacramentals. One of the privileges they have, privileges rightly said, is they see behind the veil. They see what holy water does to a demon, what the Eucharist does to a demon, what the Our Lady and the saints can do invisibly when they show up in an exorcism, when heaven intervenes. They see these like miracles playing out before them, but this is the key, especially as the world becomes more evil. We have to become holier, more sacramentalized our whole life with images, sacraments, processions, uh, meditations, all the devotions. We have to bring this in if we want to fortify individually and collectively the whole country, God willing, um, so it can be a holy nation, so people can get to heaven by being here.